Well, good morning. I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb and uh, assume that your businesses this year are probably not uh, in the same shape that they were a year ago when we met at the same time. And that's certainly the situation that we find ourselves in at Cessna. There's a couple reasons that certainly that we find ourselves in, and, and those are very familiar to you. A new administration in the White House, new leadership in the Department of Transportation, new leadership at the FAA, a global economic and credit crisis unlike anything that we've seen before a very public black eye, and it's probably been a very unfair black eye for the industry, a result of a public relations nightmare and blunder and subsequent overreaction that occurred by government officials. This all adds up to intense pressure on our employees, our customers, on businesses of all sizes around this country. So what are we doing to react to the changing market needs, and what can you do to weather the storm? This morning, I'd like to share a few elements of the Cessna strategy for surviving through this very difficult time and what we're doing to make sure that we'll be well positioned when the recovery comes. First and foremost, we chose not to focus on staying dry during the storm. Instead, we're out front fighting the storm. As the economy tumbled and the criticism of business aircraft continued, we realized that this was precisely when our customers, our suppliers, our partners, and our employees needed us to lead. One of the ways that we're leading is through a unique and edgy campaign which was launched in February. I hope that you've had a chance to see some of the ads and our website. They're different from anything that we've done before. Now, of course, these times are different from anything that we have seen before. We want this campaign to serve as a rallying point for business aviation customers worldwide, carrying the message that it's okay to fly and highlighting the fact that the use of business aviation will play a vital role in the global economic recovery. Each one of our campaign ads end, ends with an action, and it's a simple call to rise. Rise above the naysayers. Rise above the fear that can easily overcome you during this debilitating panic that's going on. Our industry is truly a national asset, and when you consider the jobs it provides, its contribution to the economy, the positive balance of trade, and the incredible passionate people that it spawns, each and every one of us must rise up and fight for it. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. Now the next element of our strategy I'd like to discuss is probably the most difficult one and one that you're facing, and that's right-sizing the business. When we were experiencing record deliveries and orders in 2007 and for the first half of 2008, our leadership team at Cessna talked about sustainable growth. And that's really growing to keep up with the current demand but not growing so quickly that if the market slowed down that we would be overstaffed. We couldn't have guessed what was going to happen in the market and that it would happen so quickly and create such an unstable environment. Forecasting the market in these dynamic times is challenging to say the least. Ultimately, it depends on how the economy and other factors affect our customers. We have a remarkable culture at Cessna. We're very much a family and that's why right-sizing the business is one of the most difficult things to do. And the final element that I'd like to talk about is the importance of working with our government officials. Even without the global economic and credit crisis, and of course the public relation issues that we've had, this world, this world would be, <coughs> excuse me, this world would be in a year of tackling big issues that have long-term monumental consequences for our industry. As I mentioned at the onset, 
new administration in the White House, new leadership of the Department of Transportation, new leadership at the FAA, and a plethora of unresolved issues that will shape general aviation for decades. I know that these issues affect all of you, and they also affect Cessna. On the regulatory front, some of the top issues are going to be security and safety. There will be new regulations, and we have to make sure that they make sense for the way that general aviation operates while providing security benefits. Applying airline-type security uh, to general aviation is just putting a round peg in a square hole. Sunny or cloudy, rainy or bright, day or night, the future of flying is now clearly in sight. Garmin SVT, synthetic vision technology. There's also FAA reauthorization and ATC modernization. As you know better than anyone, modernization is long overdue. We have to make sure that modernization occurs, but we also need to make sure that user fees are not part of the funding mechanism. There are new environmental regulations in the offering coming very, very quickly. We need to work together as an industry to make sure the new regulations make sense. There are bilateral policies also taking shape. Missteps here could also be devastating to our industry and <clears throat> in our global markets. Now we do have some victories, excuse me, <clears throat> some victories uh, this year, and that was with TARP and bonus depreciation. We were able to get language out of the TARP bill that would have uh, not allowed companies accepting TARP money to use business aviation in any form, and we were able to get bonus depreciation to help stimulate hopefully some modernization with avionics uh, mods into airplanes in the 2009 and 2010 timeframe. These victories proved that we can effectively work together and that a large part of our battle is to educate local, state, and national policymakers. Organizations like AEA and Gamma and NBAA and AOPA are an important part of the solution, but they rely on your participation. Working together, pulling together as an industry, is the only way we will weather this storm. I'd like to conclude with a couple final thoughts. This is a pivotal time for our industry in so many areas. How we perform as individual companies and as an industry will determine our future. Our industry is fundamentally important. Essentially, it's actually to our, our nation and our society a, a key ingredient. And history tells us that we will recover and will eventually emerge stronger than ever. But for the time being, we have a hard road ahead of us. And that said, I'll leave you with a final verse from our leadership campaign. Leaders, by definition, are always the first out of any predicament. Perhaps it's because their vantage point is unobstructed by anyone in front of them. And they are not held back by those who can't keep the pace. They find opportunity where some can see only doom. When others are frozen with fear, they find strength. Though their organizations are awful small, their resolve is immense. In simple terms, leaders lead. As a result, they will chart the uncharted in today's challenging economy, slip the stream of neg negativity, and deliver to the front lines of business. Rise. Thank you, and it's been a pleasure to be here today.